Hello beautiful people and welcome to my channel. My name is Jennifer Diamond and I live a whole food, plant exclusive, sofas free, gluten free lifestyle for health and well-being. And today I thought I would show you how I make my breakfast oats. But you can, don't have to have them just for breakfast, you can have them anytime. actually haven't been eating a lot of oats for breakfast, but um, when I do, I try to make them a certain way and I change it up a lot. And I also thought I would try a little bit of something new as well. So first of all, I'm going to do it in the Instant Pot. You don't have to have an Instant Pot. You can certainly do it on a stove top. But for me, I found that uh, doing my oats in the Instant Pot is just super simple because it's basically set it and forget it. So what I have is, this is Corningware, and this is part of a set that I got many, many years ago, and it fits perfectly in my Instant Pot. So this is what I'm gonna cook my oats in, and this is what I'm gonna set in the Instant Pot. But first what I wanna do is gather um, some ingredients in here and get it ready. So the first thing I wanna do is grab the oats. <laughs> So the oats that I use are from a company called One Degree. And I really like this company. They're a small family um, owned company. And this particular bag is a five pound bag that I had gotten at Costco. They don't uh, sell them consistently. But if I can't find them at Costco, I have been able to order them on Amazon and if I can get the link, I'll link it in the show notes for you. But what I really like about it is it's literally gluten-free and glyphosate-free. What is glyphosate? It's not, it's not good for us, so I'll just not go on a tangent, but I love that it's got um, so many certifications on here. And so anyhow, for me, this is my choice if I'm gonna do a rolled oat. So, you know, some people don't like to do rolled oats because they are pressed, and pressed, uh, pressed and steamed oats are, um, well, I guess they're considered processed. The, you know, it starts, there are like four different degrees of oats. So you get the wheat and that's um, like the oat groat, which I do make sometimes. And then they cut it down to like steel cut oats, if you've ever seen those. And they just are, you know, cut the ends off. And then the next phase after that is um, the rolled oats. And anything after that is is processed and um you know, there's different variations of rolled oats, right? There's the thick rolled oats and whatever. But at any rate, um, I'm gonna go ahead and use these this time. And so I do anywhere from a cup to a half a cup for, what, um, for one uh, sitting. But today, I think I'm gonna go with a half a cup because I'm gonna add other things to it. And I did scoop out um, this, which I'm just gonna kind of transfer it in here because I, I was kind of eyeballing a half a cup. And hey, look at that, it's pretty much a half a cup. So I'm pouring that in there. There's a couple little guys on the bottom here. And then what I sometimes do is I'll just have this, but sometimes I add even more goodies to it because this is a sweeter uh, versus a savory oat. And I do make a savory oat on the stovetop with mushrooms and different things that I could do another time. But for today, I'm just gonna show you the sweet one. These are um, rice cauliflower that we buy in big bags at Costco. And I use a lot of this for, um, for Remy and for us, but um, I also put it in my oats. So I'm just gonna take about a half a cup and put that in the bowl as well. Now, what I have learned about doing this is that 
they produce a little water and maybe because it was frozen. So I adjust that at the end when I add my liquid. So that's my, my cauliflower. Um, and then I'm gonna go ahead and add um, half a banana. You can add the whole banana if you want. I got really lazy, but at first I was making banana milk, which is amazing and wonderful and it's simple. All you do is take your, I have the Vitamix here, but any kind of high power blender or even a regular blender and mix um, water with the banana. Banana milk, ta-da! <laughs> but I got lazy and I don't even wanna do that. So all I'm gonna do is grab a knife, which you don't even have to do. You could just peel it back, but I'm just gonna cut half a banana and that's what I'm gonna use. Now, do you know how to peel a banana? The, the way the monkeys do, the right way, not the way that the people do, is from the bottom. From the bottom, you just kind of squeeze it and peel it and it comes right off. So many times people have issues peeling a banana from the top because they can't, you know, especially if it's green, they can't get it to bend open and then the top gets all smushed. But if you try it from the bottom, you'll see it's pretty good. So I'm going to put the other half aside and literally this is what I do. I set it in here. Sometimes I'll push it down. Um, and that's because I want to get it a little bit under the liquid. Um, and so then I just take my, my water that I would have blended the banana in to make banana milk, but instead I'm just going to add the water. And this is a cup of water, but because of the um, cauliflower, I'm going to go a little bit less than that. We'll find out if that was a good idea or not. Yep. So just a quarter of a cup less so three quarters of a cup and then you can use a fork or a spoon or your finger and I just kind of make sure that the banana is underneath it will end up browning and that's okay with me I don't mind the discoloration of the banana um, if that bothers you then yes I would say blend it first and then pour it over and you can mix it up if you want but for me this works perfectly um, I'm gonna go ahead and grab a little more water out of the Berkey. This was Berkey filtered water that I put in here and I'm gonna add it into the Vitamix, or I'm sorry, I'm gonna add it into the Instant Pot and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm gonna just go ahead and open this up. I'm gonna show you what I have going on here. So in my Instant Pot is just the trivet that came with it. I'm gonna go ahead and put that in there and open the sides up to keep the sides on the side walls. And I'm just gonna set this right in here. And I'm gonna set it into the center as much as possible. And that's it. So you could add the water to the bottom of the pot first, but I wanted to show you how that sets in there. And since I put that in first, then I'm just gonna carefully add the water to the side. I'm not adding the water into the oatmeal. I'm adding it into the bottom of the Instant Pot because I need that to close the Instant Pot and create steam and so that it will, you know, do its magic. So that's it and I'll see if I could show you. So there's water on the bottom. Just wanna make sure, water on the bottom then the trivet, and then our oatmeal. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this in and I'm gonna plug it in. I'm gonna make sure that the ceiling is on at the top and I am just literally gonna put on 10 minutes. And so I have to adjust it down to 10 minutes and that's that. So while that is uh, coming to, um, you know, coming up to seal and cook, I'm gonna get ready um, with the last part of this. So I will add any kind of frozen berries. I'm gonna use these wild blueberries. You can use anything you want, frozen or fresh. Um, I do use a lot of fresh berries. I happen to be out right now, but I've used regular uh, blueberries, raspberries, strawberries, blackberries, um, mulberries, any berries, and I love berries.
And so if they're frozen, what I find is that if I put them in the bowl, especially, well, these are, these have been sitting out <laughs> for a few minutes, so they're not that frozen, but if I put them in a bowl and I let them sit, and I'm not gonna eat this right away, maybe I'm setting this up and then I'm gonna leave and, and go for a walk or do something else. When I come back, these aren't frozen anymore. Uh, if you use a microwave and you're okay with that, you could also microwave them just to get them from the frozen state because you don't wanna add this nice hot uh, oatmeal into a bowl that has frozen fruit because, well, then it's not gonna be hot anymore. I mean, you could do it, but for me, I would prefer not to. And there's just a couple little guys left in here, so I'm gonna see if I can just spill them out. This is the end of the bag. And this particular blueberry, wild blueberry, is not organic, um, which is a bummer. It's really hard for me to find organic blueberries, although I did hear that there is a store near us that sells them, but they're in small bags, so I'll have to check that out. Um, but at any rate, those um, are what I have today. And then I would add not just one berry, I would add any, any other fruit. I could, I could add frozen mango or pineapple, which is what I have now, or cherries, which I have um, sometimes. But I, um, I'm not gonna add any more frozen fruit. What I am gonna add is part of an apple. And this is an Envy apple. And I'm just gonna rinse this side off. I used part of it. <laughs> and I'm just gonna add some little bits of apple to it. So I'm gonna cut this off. So in other words, you can use any fruit that you like. I'm just gonna add part of this apple and I'm gonna chop it up into small bits and you know, if you have an apple slicer, you could use that. I do have one, but it's just as easy for me to use a knife. But I will show you it. And this is the one that I currently have and I really like it. And it's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten slices in it. I know there are some that have more, I think up to 16 I've seen them. Um, this particular one I got at Pampered Chef, but I will uh, look and see if there is anything similar on Amazon in case you're interested. Although I didn't use it just now, but you could. You just you just take the lid off and you take the full apple and you put the core in the middle and you just push down and it gives you beautiful slices. But um, at any rate, here are the pieces that I have and I'm just gonna continue to slice them down into bite size. You can do whatever size you want. So the idea is to get as much vitamins and flavor and you know energy uh, foods into your body. At least that's my goal. So here we go. So I'm just gonna take those add them to my bowl and so today that'll be the two fruits but you know the more the merrier and don't forget we have a banana in there as well so the next thing um, I'm gonna tell you is I also like to add after the fact some flaxseed and this one is um, an organic uh, raw and sproutable flaxseed that I get on Amazon Terrasol Superfoods, I'll link it in the bottom, but it just comes with the little, you know, it's not pre-ground. I grind it, it's the actual seed. And it's really, I've learned that it's best to grind as you go, but sometimes it just isn't convenient for me. So I do have this little container and I tend to grind it maybe two or three days in advance max. And if not, then I would go ahead and grind it fresh. And I have a dry um, container from my Instant Pot. I mean, I'm mixing everything up now. I have a dry container for my Vitamix. So I would just pour some in there and blend it up. And this is basically what it is. And see, it's just nice and ground. So I'm gonna do about a tablespoon. So I'm just gonna dump the rest and then next time I'll be ready to make more.
You can do dried fruit too. Um, I happen to have some organic Turkish dried figs from our Trader Joe's. I don't usually put this in there, but you know, I was thinking, well, what else could you put in that's different or unique? I really prefer fresh fruit. Um, you know, these are dried, which makes them more calorie dense. So that might be something that you don't wanna do, but if you decided that you wanted a little or even a little bit of raisins, um, you could slice this up. I've even used fresh grapes. So it's, it's all whatever you want. It's very forgiving. And another thing that I like to put in is the chia seeds. Um, I have these chia seeds. Um, I also keep in the refrigerator some white chia seeds. You don't have to grind these. I tend to grind them when I put it in the oatmeal uh, just because then I don't get like little seeds in my teeth. But I already had my chia seeds for today, so I won't be adding them. Um, but had I not, I would definitely add it to our bowl. And then um, I have some ground cinnamon that I will put a little on top after I get the oats. And um, believe it or not, these walnuts are less than an ounce. And when I think of an ounce, because I, I, I weighed it, when I think of an ounce, I eyeball like that like that many, like just a few, these are halves, you know, just a small handful. But I was so surprised that this didn't even weigh a full ounce. So, I don't know if that's just because it's halves or what, but I thought, wow, this is a lot more than I normally eat. But if you are doing seeds or nuts, you can add them in as well, and, and that should be flavorful enough. Some people, it's just not sweet enough, you're transitioning, um, you'd be surprised at how amazing the banana milk makes it in terms of sweetness if you're looking for that. But you can also take the um, date syrup and top it. So I will be back as soon as this is ready and we'll put it together and taste it. Now, to natural release or to quick release? That is the question. And for me, I do both. Um, if I think there's a lot of water in there, I might let it wait. And if I'm busy doing other things, I might let it wait. But if I'm so hungry and I just don't want to wait, then I don't. So the thing is with oatmeal, for me, it's very forgiving. And so I'm going to go ahead and release it so we can get going. So I'm using a spoon. Usually I just use my hand, but uh, it's kind of backwards for me here. Woo, see that? And you just want to make sure you're out of the way. So let me go over here. And it was already doing such a great job of releasing that there really wasn't that much, sometimes there's so much steam. I mean, it's crazy. And the little button popped down so I know that it's safe to twist open. And then I'm gonna lift it up. I kind of like to go a little bit over it and then let any liquid from the lid drop right into the pan. And then I like to use the side on mine, it comes with this little handy dandy <laughs> shelf for the lid. And inside, there we go. Now, how, okay, how do I get it out? Most of the time with my hands, just my bare hands, but you could definitely use a mitt. You don't wanna burn yourself, this is hot. So I'm just gonna, I take the pieces of the trivet and I put them in the middle and then I grab them and I squeeze them so that it's holding this and it can't spill. And then I just gently, put it over there. You know, whatever works for you. I'm just sharing what I do because this is what I do. So now I'm going to take my bowl and this is too hot for me to hold. So I will go get my mitt and I'm going to grab the bowl. And you know, at this point, sometimes I just dump it in. I think um, I'm going to go ahead and mix it up. So there's the banana. Let's make sure you can see this good. Um, hold on. I want to just move this a little closer so you could really see it. Now, it's already cool, way cooler than when I first touched that trivet. Um, so I'm just going to kind of mix it up right in here. And you can see that there is a lot more liquid um, than I would have thought there would have been because we cut it down. And so if I were to let it sit for a few minutes, I'm sure the water would absorb, but it's all good. So I'm going to go ahead and take this and grab our bowl and just dump, dump, dump.
voila. So I'm gonna mix this up. I'm not smashing it, but the purple is pretty, of course, from the blueberries. And there's the apple in there and the banana, which you can't see. And like I said, you can continue to add as much color as you want. I mean, actually mango slices would be beautiful in this. And those I have in the freezer and they come in larger chunks. So when I use those, I tend to take the chunks and slice them into smaller, thinner chunks. They thaw faster and they're easier when I'm ready to eat. And so I don't know that I'm gonna use this, but I might, uh, the whole thing, but I, I might throughout the day. So I'm gonna use half of it. Some of the pieces are a little bigger. You can crumble it, you can chop it, you can throw it in the way it is. Um, and I'll just kind of do a little bit of that, which you can omit if you're not doing walnuts or you already ate enough walnuts. And there we go. And then I'm going to take some cinnamon and I'm just going to eyeball it. Um, you know, you can measure it. I'm just going to do, I don't know, this little dollop here, which is, hmm, maybe a fourth of a teaspoon. Bam. There it goes. And that is my oatmeal. Now I'm going to try it with and without the date syrup. So let's see how this goes. First of all, let's give it a smell. I mean, what's not to like about it? Just smell the fruit and the bananas. So sweetness. <laughs> all right, so let me go and grab some of this. Hmm. Wow. Yeah, that's my oatmeal. It tastes really good. Now I'm going to show you if I were to add this, which I guess I am to show you, I would just make a little pretty design and call it a day. Now, another thing you could do, but the flavor is not as sweet, but it is really good for iron is blackstrap molasses. And I have done a little bit of each and, um, or I'll just take um, some strawberries on the side of the bowl and just put a little over the strawberries, very delicious. So um, let's give this a try. Mm-hmm. My gosh, very good, extra sweet. So, now you know how I make my oats. Please, if you haven't subscribed, consider subscribing to my channel and help spread the word and um, hit the notification bell so that you'll be notified when I go live or post new videos. And also give it a thumbs up so we can continue to spread the news and grow my channel because I'd love to be able to share with more people. Take care, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Bye-bye.